Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot and welcome back to part 3 of this tutorial on how to code the classic punk game. So, in the last video, we managed to add some movement to our ball and to both of our paddles. In this video, we are going to add all kind of collisions, so ball against walls, paddles against walls, and ball against paddles. So, at the end of this video, you should have already a playable game, obviously without scores, but with all physics implemented. So, yep, let's start coding. Okay, guys, so I want to start by showing you our first problem. So, I'm going to go ahead and run the file for you to see it. So, I'm going to press the starting key, and I want you to see the right pedal. So, let me move it. And as you can see, we can go off the screen, both above and below. And we don't want that, right? So we will start by fixing this problem. Okay, guys, so let's start by creating a new method inside our pedal class. So I want to call this method clamp. So go ahead and type def clamp. And we're going to receive self as a parameter. And we want to do the following. We want to start by checking if our position y is less than or equal to zero in order to set it back to zero. So go ahead and type if self dot plus y is less than or equal to zero. Self dot plus y is equal to zero. And let's go ahead and test this first part of our method inside of our main loop. So we want to call our clamp function just before we show our paddles. So right here, go ahead and type paddle1.clamp and right here, go ahead and type paddle2.clamp and I'm gonna go ahead and run the file for you to see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to do what I did at the beginning of the video. So I want you to see the right paddle and I'm gonna try to go above the screen with it. So as you can see, I can't and that's because of our clamp function. Obviously, if we, if we try to go below the screen, it will let us, and that's because we haven't fixed that. And also, it should work with our left paddle too. So go ahead and test it, and let's go ahead and fix the other problem. Okay, but actually, before we finish this clamp method, I would like you to try and complete it by yourself. So the second part should be a little bit more complex than this one, but if you understand how rectangles work in Pygame, you should get it pretty easy. Okay, I hope you tried, now I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I wanna check if our position y, so self.pos y, plus our height, so self.height, it's greater than or equal to the height of the screen, and if that's true, I want to set the our position y to be equal to the height of the screen minus our height. So in this case, we need to take into account our height, our pedal's height, and that's because of what I told you. So remember the x comma y coordinate of our rectangle, it's located at the upper left corner. Okay, so hope that's clear. I'm gonna go ahead and test it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to go below the screen. And as you can see, I can't. And that's because our clamp function is correctly done. So it should work with our left paddle too. So go ahead and test it. And we can go ahead and continue. Okay guys, so we wanna start checking our ball collisions. So both ball against walls and ball against paddles. So in order to do that, I wanna create a new class and I'm gonna name it collision manager. So go ahead and type class collision manager. In this class, we don't want to create an init method because we only need this class to have some helper functions that are gonna tell us if the ball is colliding with a wall or with a paddle. So I want to start by declaring our three functions. So the first function is going to check a collision between the ball and the first paddle, so the left one. So go ahead and type def 
between between bow and paddle one. We are going to receive self as a parameter and we want to receive bow. So this will be our bow object and we want to receive a paddle one. So I know this name is a little bit too long. You can do it a little bit shorter, but I like to be explicit with our functions. So I'm going to go ahead and pass here in order to create our second function that is going to be the one that checks a collision between the ball and the second paddle. So the paddle located at the right of the screen. So go ahead and type def between ball and paddle2. And we're receiving again ourselves a ball object and a paddle2. And we can go ahead and pass here also. So by the way, these two paddles are going to be also our paddles objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our last function. And this function is the one responsible of checking a collision between the ball and any wall. So go ahead and type def between ball and walls. We are receiving self and a ball object. And we can go ahead and pass it. So these are the three functions that we're going to do in this video. In the next video, we are going to add some more functions, but for now, we are going to code these three functions. Okay, so I want to start with this between ball and paddle one function. And the first thing we want to check is actually if our ball's y coordinate is at the correct position in order to have a collision with the paddle one. Okay, so let's go ahead and type if ball.pasy and remember that we are sending a ball object that's why we can access our position y plus ball.radius is actually greater than our paddles one pos y and here we're just checking if our ball is below the paddles position y so we now want to check if our ball is also above our paddles one position y plus his height. So go ahead and type and ball.pasy minus ball.radius it's less than paddles one dot pos y plus paddles one dot height. So I know this might be a little bit confusing, but I just want you to know that we are checking if our ball's y coordinate is at the correct position in order to have a collision with the paddle one. Okay, so we now want to check if our ball's x coordinate is at the correct position. So we want to type the following. If ball.posx minus ball.radius is less than or equal to our paddles one dot plus x plus our paddles one dot width dot width if this is true it is because our ball's x coordinate is also at the correct position in order to have a collision with our pedal one so we can go ahead and return true if neither of these two if statements are correct or are true, we can go ahead and return false. And again, guys, I know it might be a little bit confusing, but if you think about it, it will start to make sense. So let's now go ahead and code our between ball and pedal to function. So we wanna do pretty much the same, but we wanna change some things. So go ahead and type if ball.posy plus ball.radius it's greater than our pedals 2.posy and again we are just checking here that we are below that our ball is below the pedals 2 position y so we now want to check if we are also above so go ahead and type and ball.posy minus ball.radius is actually less than 
our paddles to position y plus our paddles height our paddles to height and again we're just checking if our ball's y coordinate is at the correct position so we now want to check if our ball's x coordinate is at the correct position so go ahead and type if ball.posx plus ball.radius is actually greater or equal than our paddles to x position x so if both of these statements are true we can return true and if any of those two statements is false we can go ahead and return false so again i know it might be a little bit confusing but we are just pretty much checking that our ball is at the correct y and x coordinates in order to have collision with our paddles to object okay so before we test our game let's go ahead and complete our between ball and walls method so this one is a little bit more easier so we want to check for a top collision and for a bottom collision so for the top we want to we want to check the following so go ahead and type if ball.posy minus ball.radius is actually less than or equal than zero we can return true and for the bottom one we can go ahead and type if ball.posy plus ball.radius is actually greater than or equal to our screen height we can go ahead and return true as well and if neither of those if statements is true we can go ahead and return false okay we now want to do one last thing and that will be inside our ball class so we want to create two methods the first one i'm gonna call it um, i don't know paddle collision so paddle collision we're going to receive a self as a parameter i'm gonna pass it and the second method we want to create is going to be called wall collision and we are going to pass ourself as a parameter okay so these two functions are going to be very very easy to code but before we code them i want to quickly explain why okay so i want to start by explaining the pedal collision method so let's say our ball is right here and it is approaching this pedal in this direction so once this ball collides this pedal we should have a resultant direction like this right so if you see closer we are just changing our x direction our ball's x direction why because we start going down and we finish going down and this is for the y direction but for the x direction we start going to the left and we finish going to the right so we basically just have to change our x direction when this happens same thing happens if we are approaching this same pedal from this direction so as you can see we start going up and we finish going up for the y direction but we started going left and we finished going right for the x direction so again the only thing we want to do or we have to do is change our ball's x direction and by the way this same thing applies for this pedal so you can go ahead and try it go ahead and draw it but you'll see that it's pretty much the same so guys now that we know this we can go to our code and type the following self.posx equals minus self.posx so that's all it's pretty pretty simple now let me explain to you this wall collision method and you'll see it's pretty much the same so let's say we have our ball right here and we are approaching this wall 
in this direction. So the resultant direction is going to be this one. So as you can see, let me change of color. We started going down, but we end going up for the y direction. And we started going right, but we end going right for the x direction. So now what we want to do if we collide against a wall is pretty much change our y direction. And if you try to do it with this wall from this direction or from this direction, you'll see that we just need to change our y direction. So let's go to our code and let's go ahead and type self.posy equals minus self.posy. Oh guys, I'm so sorry with you. I just realized that we need to put here the dx and here the dy. Why? Because we are talking about directions. So let's go ahead and change this to dx and minus dx and here to dy to minus dy. So yeah, again, guys, I'm so sorry with you, but we are talking about directions, right? Okay, so in order to test our functions, our code that we just wrote, let's go ahead and call all these functions inside of our main loop. So the first thing we want to do is actually create a collision manager object. I'm going to call it collision. So remember the name of our object equal our class. So in this case, collision manager, we are not sending any parameter. And inside of our main loop, right here in this if playing statement, we want to go down here and we want to check for collisions. So we're going to use our collision object. So if collision right here dot between ball and paddle one, and we're going to send our ball and our paddle one. If that's true, we can go ahead and take our ball object and call our pedal collision function that we just created. Now we want to check if collision, so our object, remember, dot between ball and pedal 2, and we're going to send our ball and our pedal 2. So if this is true, we want to we want to use our ball object to call our pedal collision again. And the last collision we want to check is the wall collision. So if collision dot between ball and walls, and we're going to send our ball. If that's true, we want to take our ball object and call our wall collision function. So that's all we have to do. I know it's too much thing, but if you try to practice it, if you try to code it again, it eventually make more sense. So I'm going to go ahead and save and run the file for you to see that it works. Okay, so I'm going to press the starting key and I'm going to move my pedal. Yeah, and as you can see, we have collisions, guys. So we pretty much have a game now. Let me see if the top wall collides. Yep, so it's perfectly done, guys. So yeah, guys, this is the end of this video. I hope you like it and I hope you learned something new. In the next video, we are going to start displaying our scores. So each time a player scores a goal, we're going to add a point to his score. So yeah, if you like it, if you enjoy it, if you're enjoying this tutorial, make sure to leave a like, make sure to comment and make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.